All right, uh, welcome back to a, a very important uh, special edition of our vlog. Uh, nothing could be more applicable than uh, what we're talking about today, keeping our village safe. Uh, we have a special guest. So today is, I don't know, today's Tuesday. The, any idea what 26th. the day is? 26th. 26th. Yeah. And it's a little before 9. We'll pump this out right away. Thank, to, uh, thank you to uh, Sebastian for producing it and Leslie for pumping it out. Our guest today is our public works director, uh, Bob Harari. And hey, Bob's going to tell you all about our, uh, our storm preparation uh, for what uh, could be a very significant storm event tonight and tomorrow. And so to hear about the weather, over to our, uh, our, our Director of, of Public Safety, uh, Chief Tomasi. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, as nice as it is outside right now, we are expecting a major storm to come through the area later this afternoon. Tuesday through Thursday, we're expecting uh, flash flood warnings. I'm sorry, watches right now. It's a flash flood watch. And we're expecting two to three inches of rain accumulating and there could be periods of high rain. So we could look at localized flooding in this area. Um, go to the next slide if you would, Sebastian. We're also monitoring high winds. Again, this is gonna be later this evening, probably about 7 p.m. the winds are gonna pick up. Mm -hmm. We're anticipating winds of gusts up to 60 to 70 miles per hour. And we know from our history, whenever we have rain and wind, we're gonna have trees down, possibly power loss, and some uh, road closures. Yeah. So we're gonna talk to you a little bit about how prepared we are. And again, this is Tuesday through Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. This is a long period. This is our first major storm of the year. This is an atmospheric river, they're calling it. Um, so a lot of rain, a lot of wind, and we're prepared for it. Uh, we're ready to go. But again, a big concern is we know how to handle these type of storms. Yep. But with all the fire damage this past summer, uh, we're looking at a lot more runoff. So there's gonna be some debris flows, um, not impacting Carmel specifically, except for the river. Um, if there's a lot of debris flow, we could get some backups and we could get some flooding in the lowlands down by Mission Fields. I, not to put anybody in panic, but the county is putting out evacuation warnings to the areas surrounding the burn scar areas. We're not affected by that but we will be monitoring the river, mm -hmm. its its height, and we'll be checking that area regularly. So I, I, think, I think the most important message is, again, even though the stay-at-home order's been lifted by the state and county, is that if you don't have to go out in the next 36 to 48 hours, don't. don't. Get prepared today before the storm hits and stay at home. Yeah, correct. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and right. the only other benefit is that the soil isn't super saturated just yet. So even though we'll have those high wind events, we may not lose as many trees as we would if it had been raining for the last several we months. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. thanks, Chief. Thank yeah, you. Bob, you want to talk about how sure. Public Works is prepared? I, I'll certainly be happy to do that. So, hey, everybody. <clears throat> In terms of drainage, the drainage is of concern on the rain, up to three or four inches of rain. <clears throat> oh, the drainage system doesn't care much about the wind. The trees care about the wind, but they don't care about the rain as much. So in terms of drainage, what we've done is we've uh, inspected and cleared out all our our open channels, all our culverts. Uh, today we're placing sandbags in all spots that we know of that will uh, most likely have a problem. Um, we have a new stockpile of sand and sandbags behind the Carmel Youth Center. There's no charge if you're a resident of Carmel, so help yourself there. Um, we recently completed the storm drain master plan, so now we have a, for the first time, we have a very good understanding of uh, where we have problem areas within our underground drainage system. So <clears throat> we're better able to react and, uh, and respond to, to problems. Uh, we will have two public works crews on standby th all through the night and possibly the next couple nights. Uh, we also have stocked up uh, some of our vehicles with um, barricades and uh, street signs. So uh, police and public works will have those ready if we need to do some road closures. In terms of the trees, um, if the gusts go up to 60 or 70 miles per hour, we will have some down trees. That's not an if, but just a matter of when. Um, well, many of our older trees in our urban forests have suffered uh, years of drought. Some have diseases. Many are nearing the end of their life. So we, over the past couple of years, we've done a lot to reduce the backlog of our, of our dead trees. In fact, we've increased capacity in-house to remove it, uh, remove some of the dead trees ourselves, but we still have dead trees out there. 
and we have limbs that are, have become brittle or have been dead for, for some time. So <clears throat> as branches or trees fall on the road, the first responders, which is usually police, but it could be fire, they'll tape it off and you know, have the area protected. Public works crews will then uh, come right behind them and clear off the road. So our goal is to clear off the road, not to take care of the whole tree during a storm. So mm -hmm. once the road is cleared off or, or met, made safe, we'll come back the next possible business day to do the cleanup. However, if a tree or branches fall on a power line, that's, that's usually the worst case scenario that we have around here. So we'll, again, we'll make the area safe. We'll get the city forester to check out the trees, but we'll have to get PG&E to de-energize the line before we can uh, take the tree out. So <clears throat> as we know from past uh, storms, PG&E could be here in a few hours, or it could be days to restore power in the worst case scenario. So we hope that that's not the case. But we'll be in communication with PG&E. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And course. so they'll be on our hotline as well. In the right. past, they've been very responsive to the village. Right, they have been. And um, we also have five on-call tree contractors. So as the trees go down, we have up to five different companies to call to have them come in and help us. Uh, last but not least is the beach. We know there's going to be uh, some potential for debris, high, high tides, and uh, uh, <clears throat> stuff that falls out of our storm drain system. So again, the beach is not as urgent as uh, keeping the streets open, but we will clean up the debris on the beach uh, as soon as possible. Depending on the surf, too, we may need to close some of the stairwells at the yeah, beach. Right. So yeah. the public needs to know that, Good especially point. the south end, right. which usually gets flooded pretty well during these storms. Okay. Um, as far as police, we're going to have extra police on duty. The fire department's upstaffing as well. We've notified our CERT team. We have plenty of volunteers to come out and help. And again, with any down tree or road closure, power outage, we're notifying PG&E right away. Um, we're asking that the community, if you need anything, call us, call your police department, we'll, we will respond. Um, if you live outside the city, you know, you call the county and they will also respond. We're, we're here to help as well and we'll do as much as we can to help uh, everyone out as they need it. So we're Great. ready for this storm. Uh, we just want the community to know that. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you both for what, doing what you do. So we have the EOC activated to a level one. Correct. Correct. So we'll be tracking all of uh, all the damage. Um, stay off the beach, stay at home. And if there's an issue, dial 911. Is that the correct number? I mean, call the, the emergency line so we can track these calls and uh, yeah, we'll all be available. Um, call our cell phones if, if something's wrong, but uh, we're here to help and, and protect the village. So thank you both for what you do. Thank you, uh, thank you for our public works uh, teams, our fire department and our police will be uh, again, stewarding the, the village through this uh, event. So, yep. anything else? We're ready. Okay, we're as ready as can. All right, can go. Anything to close? <laughs> uh, take good care. Take good care. Hi, Chip's mom. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Chip's mom. <laughs>